Jumping back into our lecture, I just want to recap really quickly. Um, contract and feather is, is a really good option to kind of quickly and easily move portions of one image into another. And the way that it works is you'll contract and select less pixels than you need. And when you feather, it then expands your selection, but it feathers the selection from being fully opaque, meaning you can see it, to, be, to translucent, meaning you can see through it. And my recommendation is whatever you contract, you should use half of that setting on the feather. And you should err on the side of less pixels. And so my example that I just did, I did, I contracted it by four pixels and then I feathered it by two. You could try 10 and five or 20 and 10, but the more it is, the, the more unrealistic it's gonna look like. Like you might even wanna try contract two pixels and feather one, feather one and see if that works for you. Um, this is just another example of how I used that cup and I placed it in a field. Now additional editing would be needed for this to make it look actually realistic, like these are sitting in the field. I would want to make the grass look like it's going around the base of the image. I would want to make sure that the intensity of the color matched in both. But very quickly I just copy and pasted three copies of that cup into this image and it looks reasonably, um, it looks it looks reasonably familiar, right? So I look at it and I, I don't immediately say those cups look too funny. Um, once you stare at it for a while, you know that I've placed those, those images and I should do other things to make it more look more realistic. But right off the bat, they look seamless when you look at the transition between where the cup ends and then the background starts. Another way to modify a selection is to add it add to it or subtract from it. And I've talked about this in my other videos, but now there's an official slide for it, so make sure that you're taking notes on it. These key commands are good to memorize as you'll find yourself using them quite a bit. And so I don't require you to memorize key commands in any of my classes because I think that it's just, it's overwhelming to have to memorize certain things when you'll find the key commands that work for you and you'll find that there's certain key commands you're going to use a lot and certain key commands you're never going to use again. And so I'd rather you kind of, um, in, a, in an organic way, figure out the key commands that work for you. So making a brush bigger or smaller with your right and left bracket keys, I would, I would memorize that one. And then I would also memorize shift adds to a selection, an option or alt if you're on a PC subtracts from a selection, because you will be making selections for everything that you do in Photoshop if you're doing it right. And then I've already said this, but I highly recommend do not hit cancel, do not hit undo, do not like deselect and try to make your selection over again if whatever selection tool you're using in Photoshop accidentally grabs too much. Instead, use that option or alt key to subtract and the shift to add because the more that you do it, Photoshop is learning from what you're doing and it will make better selections down the road for you. So next I want to talk about the select and mask dialog box. This may be listed differently in your version of Photoshop, so I can't remember exactly what the wording was in earlier versions of CC or even in uh, CS6, but you're looking for a button along the top of your um, options bar in Photoshop that when you make a selection, you have an active selection, an active marquee, and you have a, t um, a selection tool selected. Um, you should have this bar across the top of your workspace, the options bar, and you should have the option for select and mask or something similar. And when you click on it, it will launch a dialog box that has a variety of features that allow you to refine a selection. And so I'm going to take this selection of the flower. And I said in the previous video that I use the polygonal lasso tool. And I click, 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 clicked all the way around the outside. And then I smoothed it because I thought, well, it's a little angular. So if I use the select, modify, and then uh, smooth tool, that will fix it. Well, it didn't. If I copy and paste that image, it still looks like the image on the right. And it doesn't look natural. It has funny edges, and it just it didn't do a good job because those are not the right selection modify options um, that produce the best result for this particular image. And so if we launch the select and mask dialog box, you will see that it kind of like takes over your screen. Um, depending on what version of Photoshop you have, it'll be a big box that literally is the size of your screen. In the version that I'm working with, all the panels, um, oh, there's one panel, the property panel has all the options. And then over on the left-hand side where your toolbar used to be, it's been taken over by the tools that you can use inside the Select and Mask dialog box. And so there are lots of settings inside here, and I'm not going to focus on having you master each one. I just want to show you some things that you could do in here. and then. For me, I think in this dialog box in particular, the, the select and mask option, 
um, you learn by doing. You slide something and it doesn't do what you want, so you slide it back and say, well, that did, did X, Y, and Z. And so I want you to kind of click around and, and slide the bars back and forth and see what happens. Um, but I'll also provide some tips and tricks for getting good results. And so in this example here, um, I have a selection. It's not a great one. I have a harsh edge. But I'm going to use these, these brushes and these settings on the properties panel to make adjustments to kind of feather the edge and make this more seamless if I was to copy and paste it to use it somewhere else. And so you can see in my updated example, it's zoomed in really far, but if I zoomed out, it would look a little bit more natural. Um, you can see that I made some adjustments. First, at the top of the dialog box, there's a view mode. I chose the onion skin view, which means to see the little checkerboard pattern. Um, I used edge detection and smart radius, and I slid the radius back and forth until it figured out the edge of the flower that I was trying to select. Um, the smart radius is intuitive, and so you can check that, and it will try to help you. Um, you can smooth your selection, so I smoothed it a little bit. I increased the feather, which is causing that blurriness on the edge, and I increased that until I was comfortable with the amount of feather. And then I worked on edge shifting. Oh no, actually I didn't, I didn't adjust the edge shift, it said it's zero. And then last but not least, I decontaminated the colors. That's my favorite thing to do inside this dialog box. If you choose to decontaminate the colors, it will take the colors that are around the outside of your selection, so my flower is a peachy pink coral color, and it will recognize that there's like dark pink or there's dark purple or there's green behind it, and it will recognize that you're trying to keep the flower, which has all the pink tones, and you don't want the background that might have green for the leaves, and it will decontaminate and get rid of those colors. It will it'll start to recognize what colors are supposed to be there, and it will try to remove those background um, colors. This works really well when you're trying to make a selection of hair, and like you can see the background through somebody's hair because like their hair has flyaways or something. Uh, if you decontaminate the colors, it helps a lot in getting rid of, getting rid of the background. And before I, you have to select OK to kind of accept your changes. I made one last decision in this box. The very bottom, there's an option to output to. I chose to output to a new layer with a layer mask. And so it took my background layer and it duplicated it, and it created what's called a layer mask. And we'll learn about that after I finish the, the selections. Um, but what's important about it is that's just one of the options. Hit that drop down, and you can load it as a selection. You can load it as a new document and different things. And so always, if there's a drop down, you should always click on it and just see what your options are. Even if you don't know what those options do, you could even look into it if you don't know. And so now that I have this, I can compare it to the original. And so the first one, I had weird stuff off the edge. I had harsh edges. I have flyaways over here. But after I launched the select and mass dialog box, and I literally just started at the top of the panel, and I kind of slid these sliders back and forth. If something looked a little too blown out or a little funky, I slid it back and I put it in place. And I just went back and forth and I adjusted these settings until I got something that I want. And now I have a nice feathered edge that if I were to copy and paste this, I could put it on something else. And you wouldn't be able to tell what color the original background was or anything like that because I've re removed all of those type of ed um, elements.